Shout out to Edward Polanco on Patreon for nine months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more, as well as supporting the free tutorials on this channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. What's up guys, Quezzy or Noah here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today we're in After Effects and I'm going to be showing you this text reveal effect using Mr. Mercury in After Effects. I'm going to be showing you three different variations and hopefully they will teach you how to use the Mr. Mercury effect in After Effects and make these text reveals or different animations a lot easier. There's so many different ways you could approach this and do full background transitions and stuff like that, but hopefully this will give you a good idea of how uh, the uh, Mercury plugin works and how to do these liquid of transitions and effects. Be sure to like the video at 100 likes. I will put the After Effects file down in the description for you guys to download, or you can download it now on my Patreon as a $5 tier member. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all these tutorials I have coming out. I'm going to be doing weekly tutorials for a little bit, so you don't want to miss out on them. I'm going to be covering Cinema 4D, After Effects, Photoshop, all the good stuff. But let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're in a new project here, so let's go ahead and create a new composition. I'm not going to name my comps. I like the 123 method. Uh, this is 1080p and 10 seconds. Background color doesn't matter too much, but I'm using black. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. First thing we're going to do is grab the text we want to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use just Noah, my name. And the size I'm using is about 323. Font is Pantone, and we're using the black caps, so like a bold font. Kind of like, like a nice bubbly font, like rounded edges and stuff, but you can use any font you want. Our text is white, and I don't think there's anything else going on here in the character settings. Uh, I'm going to go to my Align tab and align it center both ways, um, aligning that to the composition. If you don't have any of these uh, windows here on the side that I have, all you have to do is go to Window and then find them like the Align. Now, my uh, menu isn't in the screen capture right now so I can't show you that but you just have to go up to window and then find whatever it is you're looking for uh, once you have your text go ahead right click on it and create uh, masks from text just like that and we just have our masks of our text which is white right now now the effect we're gonna be using is the mr. mercury so if we go to effects and type mercury or part of it you get the CC mr. mercury now to apply this effect, you can go up to layer, add a new solid, or you can right click new um, solid, just like that. I'm using the dark purple I use in my uh, color scheme on my YouTube and social media. So it's a dark purple, uh, it says it's a dark blue, but what are you gonna do? Uh, just make it the comp size and click okay. And go ahead and drag that mercury plugin to the dark solid. If you press play, you'll get all this liquid showing up. Uh, if I make this transparent, you'll see it a little better just like that and the first effect I'm going to show you is just a text reveal with the liquid so uh, I'm gonna to go to frame 0 and come to my mr. mercury settings and mess with them a little bit so I'm gonna keep the 5 radius X and radius Y the velocity and birth rate will stay the same but we're gonna hike up the longevity to about 10 or something big so these will kind of just stay here um, you can't see them because the gravity is a little too high still, but we're going to go ahead to that next. Knock that down to 0.5. Resistance, we're going to bump up to 0.25. So now these should just kind of linger here a little longer. Yeah, cool. The last thing we have to do then is increase the sizes of these. So the burst size, I'm going to make 1.88. So that's nice and big. The death size can kind of be whatever. Let's see what that's looking like. That's looking pretty good. We're going to jack this up though. We're going to go to 1. And that should engulf basically the whole text. Very cool. But this is a little boring how it is. We want it to actually sweep across the text. And if I show you what this would look like, if you go to the Noah outlines or your text outlines and set the trick mat to alpha, um, by the way, you might have to come down here and toggle the switch to get the trick mat. And you press play, you can see it reveal, uh, reveals our text like that. It's a little boring. I wanted to make it a little more interesting. So I'm going to take off the trick mat, make our solid visible again. And we're going to go to the producer, increase that anchor point upwards so it's right here, and then move it left. So it's just at the left of our canvas. Let's keyframe the producer there. Go forward a few frames. I'm going to go, yeah, we'll go to three and slide it across well off the screen. Very cool. And if we press play, you can see it reveals our text like that. And you can see this is like a full screen thing, so you could have it as a transition itself. But if we make that a trick mat, um, or alpha the trick mat, and press play, 
there is our text reveal, and we could hike up the resistance or lower the gravity to make that slower. Also, I have it on the outlines, so I could come here to fill and add a fill to my outlines and change the color. But you could actually reverse this and it would still work. So if I bring the solid below and alpha it, the purple will actually be the color. And I don't know if you can see, but the if you do it this way, you can actually get some 3D effects on the mercury because there is lighting and shading on that layer. So if you want more of a 3D effect, you could do it this way. I like it the other way and using the flat design personally. But again, it's up to you how you do it. Um, there's so many different ways you can customize it. So I'm pretty happy with this little animation. So if we actually go to composition and create another new comp, I just went to composition new and we're, we're gonna just make it the same, click okay. Go to your project, get comp one, drag it in here and let's make three copies. So there's four of these. The top one's gonna stay the default white like that. But we're going to add a fill to the other three. And if I go to my libraries and get my color scheme, I'm going to fill these with the different colors. So this one will be pink. Second one, I'll make the dark purple. And the third one will be blue. And I can like space these out a bit. So this will go to about there. We'll go about here. Is that about right? Yeah, okay. And then this one will be a little shorter. So there's, it's not exactly even, but it gives some um, space in between. And you get this layered effect, like so, which looks pretty cool. And um, eventually this should disappear. Yeah, there you go. And it goes away. So that's uh, the text effect. Uh, that's the first text effect. Looks pretty cool. Again, you could keep going and customize it even further. Let's go ahead and create another new composition. Make it the exact same. Again, apologies, you can't see my menu, but I'm going to composition new for that. Um, let's go to our outlines, copy them, come to comp three, paste them so we have them once more. And this is gonna be the effect of the liquid just constantly coming and going over your text. So it's like a constant animation, it's not a reveal. Um, so let's again, right click new solid layer. Uh, we'll make it the same dark purple. We'll get our mercury effect again. Drop it in here, get rid of the alpha for now. We don't really want it. Um, and let's go to our settings for this one. So the X for this is gonna be a lot bigger. We're gonna go to about 60. So this covers the X everywhere. As you can see, it kind of covers our whole canvas um, in the X direction. The next thing we wanna change is the gravity. We'll make that 0.5. And the resistance zero, yep. Uh, size, all the same, yeah, so this is it. Uh, these settings for, uh, in this case, are very simple. It's barely anything. As you can see, we just increased the X radius. But if you want more customization, you can mess with these uh, these further. And also, one thing that I have failed to mention so far is that you can actually set the animation to other things. So you could do fractal, explosive, twirl, all these other ones. Um, so feel free to mess with those as you're doing this. Also, you can change it up. You don't have to use the dark blue solid as the blob layer. You can actually add things like this chromatic texture. And if I go to my mercury, copy that and paste it to this, it will actually do that effect on that texture. So th this chromatic is actually from a free pack I have on my channel that I'll link down below. And you can see this is a pretty cool look. It's a little different. Um, but it's another option you have. So you can use any image like this, um, but just wanted to remind you guys of that. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and stick with the dark blue. And we're actually gonna alpha matte that right now so we get the white um, because I wanna change the color of this. But basically what we're gonna do is duplicate both of these and they will reverse, so drag the outlines below again and slightly change the settings of this one. So go to the dark blue solid the duplicated one, pump down the gravity to maybe 0.3 and add a fill to the outline. Which will make light blue and then we'll duplicate it again. Make it pink this time and go to the dark blue solid. We'll change, we won't change the gravity, we'll just change the size. So maybe we knock this down to 0.45 and yeah cool so if we play this 
you can see it's just a constant liquid effect on our text, which looks pretty cool. And then if you wanted the text to be visible at all times, you could go to the original comp, grab our original text, paste that in here, bring it below, and make that visible. And then maybe we make this outline, instead of having it white, we make it the dark uh, blue or purple. So then it's constantly going and it looks pretty cool. Now we're going to go ahead and create another new comp for the final version of this. So all the same stuff, click OK, grab an outline, copy, paste it over, and uh, get rid of the fill. And this one is super cool. So we're actually going to go up to, um, or we're going to right click new and get a shape layer and get your shape and create like a very tiny square like that. Be sure to turn alpha off on the outlines and bring that square down to the end of your first letter. Click off, click back on, and go to your anchor tool here. Zoom in and change the anchor point to the center of your shape. My shape actually has this stroke on it and a fill, but that does not matter because they will be hidden anyway, but duplicate that layer for as many letters you have. So I have four letters, so I'm gonna duplicate it three times and select all the shapes by holding shift and press P on the keyboard to open up their position. Open up the outline masks and you want to one by one paste the shape of the mask to the shape layer. So what I mean by that is go to the, your first letter, which is the N, copy the mask path, go to the position of shape one, make sure we're at zero on the timeline, paste, and you'll get a bunch of keyframes. Um, so if I press play on that, you can see it actually follows the letter. And you can come to these keyframes and easy ease them. Um, you would want to easy ease the last two go to keyframe easy ease i'm going to keep it all like linear and standard just for the sake of the tutorial make it a little easier uh, but that's the first letter down then we want to come to the o and we want to get the outer mask of the o because there's two masks for the o we want the outer one let's copy that one and paste it to shape two but make sure we're at keyframe zero paste and do that for all your letters So if I press play, you can see all those squares follow our letters around. Pretty cool. Now select all your shapes and press P again and get the solid once more with our mercury effect. So the radius is going to be one for both. Velocity is going to be 0.4 and then we have a birth rate of four, longevity of five, gravity of zero, uh, resistance of about 1, I have mine as 1.16, so I'm going to do the exact same. Extra is 1, that's fine, and then the birth size and death size is fine as it is. So there's our mercury settings. If we press play, you can see it's just like a slow blob that's created. But uh, we want to duplicate this uh, three more times, so copy it, paste it three times, and select the first one, press Alt, and click on the stopwatch for the producer just like that and then you'll get this menu popping up. So we want to use the expression here, click the little twirly hurricane looking one um, and drag down to your first shape and drag that line to the position. And you do that and you can see you'll get this message here, um, this comp dot layer, shape layer one, transform position. So basically if we go through, you can see the um, mercury effect actually takes place around the letter N. And we're gonna do that for all the letters. So you basically copy what we just did there for all the letters. So I'm gonna close the first dark blue there. I'm gonna close the first shape layer we use so I don't use that position again by accident. Go to the second one, Alt, click the producer, and drag this down to the second layer. And by the way, I wanna give a shout out to SD motion for his tutorial, which basically does this exact thing that I'm showing you now. Um, I do a few more steps at the end, which is why I'm including it here, but he is the one that created this idea, or at least where I saw it. So big shout out to him. His link will be in the description if you want to see more After Effects tutorials. But I'm going to go ahead and speed through the next two of these. Cool, so now if we play through, you'll see we get that liquid spawning around all of our letters. 
and then it engulfs it like so. Now we don't want the squares to be visible, so we're just gonna go ahead and hide all of them now. Uh, but we want the letters to, or the liquid to be confined to the letters. So we're gonna have to duplicate our outline three times, one for each of these layers. And again, you could put the trick mat on either the dark blue or on the outline layer. I'm gonna do it on the dark blue, so I'm gonna put all my outlines below so that our effect is just gonna be the white and the flat design. So set all the outlines to alpha. And if you play through, you'll see you get something like this. Now, there is a problem. You can see the O starts here and the N starts up here. And the O uh, liquid leaks into the N, uh, which we don't want. So we're gonna have to go and turn off the masks for some of these. So the first one here is the N. So if we open up this and go to the masks, we can actually select all the other letters, set them to none, so they won't affect anything. And then we're gonna have to do that to the other three. So this one's the O, we're gonna have to hide the N and turn off all the others. And we're just gonna go ahead and do that for the other two as well. And there we go. So if I play this through now, it should only affect that letter. Very nice. So I'm happy with that effect. Again, I wanna mention that if you go to the shape and mess with the position keyframes, you can get a smoother um, animation, but I'm not doing that. I'm keeping it linear for now. But I'm gonna go ahead and create another new composition. Again, exactly the same. Go to the project and add comp four. And we're gonna do the layering thing. So I'm actually gonna do three this time. We're gonna grab the fill once more. I'm gonna add that to the bottom two layers and keep the top one as the white one. So one of these will be blue and the other will be pink. Let's go ahead and drag this one out and drag this one out. We'll actually extend it further. So we get something like this that's layered. Now I did multiple layers in my actual final one. I think I had maybe like five total layers, but you get the point with three. Anyway, once these are all uh, or once the white is completely visible, I want the other ones to not be here. So I'm gonna actually select them both, Command Shift D and then delete. So they cut off right here. And then if I duplicate this top one and kind of align it normally and right click time, uh, time reverse layer, bring it down a little bit. We'll go to about there. Set the alpha for the white layer to alpha matte. And if we do this, you can see it gives us our animation. Uh, very cool, very cool, yeah, 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 yeah. Then we get to the end and it will reverse it. And if I turn on the transparency, you can see that that is completely disappearing, which is cool. Uh, if you do do the transparency, you get some wicked ed edges when these are all overlapped, as you can see. So you'd have to mess around with it, probably have a background of some sort to hide it. Um, or maybe you have more After Effects knowledge than me to be able to solve that. But that's just how I do it. And that's basically the effect, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's a pretty cool little effect. Again, big shout out to um, SD Motion who created that other tutorial. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like. Again, 100 likes. You can download the original project file with all the different variations of animations I did. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials. Also, check out my Patreon if you want to support the tutorials and me uh, in creating more. Follow me on Twitter at Quezzy, follow my Instagram, that's Quezzy, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.